What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you how to scan real objects with your phone and then turn them into 3D models. Let's get started. If you're not familiar with 3D scanning or photogrammetry, it is a process where you take lots of pictures of an object and then use the software to compile those pictures and turn them into a 3D model. This process usually requires a lot of skills when using the camera and the software is often quite complicated. So it is not very easy to do. But now there's a new app called Display Land that allows you to do this straight from your phone. First, let's download the app. Display Land is available for both Android and iOS devices. After you sign up or log in, you will see the home page where you can explore other users' works. To start creating your own scans, click the plus button and you will see several tips, which I will talk about in a second. Here are some tips for getting ready to scan an object. Number one, choose the right object. Try choosing an object that has lots of colors, patterns, or textures, such as a wall with graffiti. In this case, I'm choosing the statue here, which has a lot of bumps, so it will make it easier for the app to track. Number two, lighting. Lighting is also important. Sharp shadows are not great and can result in lower quality details. Even lighting is the best. So if you are capturing outdoors, wait until the sun is blocked by the clouds so that the lighting is more evenly lit. Number three, use a selfie stick. Using a selfie stick will give you more control and can help you reach higher when capturing. Make sure to use both hands to balance so that the camera doesn't shake too much. With that in mind, let's begin scanning. Number one, adjust lighting. When you begin scanning, click on the icon at the bottom right. This will optimize the lighting for your scene. Number two, start with a wide view. I usually start with a wide view that captures the whole object. Then I will zoom into the details later. Number three, point and turn. Lock the camera on your object as you turn. This will help you capture all the size as you move around the object. Number four, move slowly. Remember to move slowly so that the image capture is not blurry. This is important for getting good quality texture. Number five, make several loops. It's important that you loop around your object several times to capture more data. The second time I loop around my object, I will zoom in closer to get more details. I usually start at the base and then move upward in the third and fourth loop. Remember to get the top of the object too. And don't forget the area around the base of the object. Number six, change camera angle. Try to tilt the camera when you zoom into details so that you get a different angle. This helps prevent overlapping or repeating textures. Number seven, minimap. The dots you see on screen represent the geometric points in a world. If you click the button at the bottom left, you will see the minimap of your 3D object, which is pretty cool. Number eight, know when to stop. Over capturing is just as bad as under capturing, so it's important that you know when to stop. The bar at the bottom measures your progress through a capture. Usually if you see lots of dots around your object and the minimum requirement has been met, then you are ready to stop. Number nine, practice, practice, practice. Capturing is a skill, so the key is to practice and try multiple times. I got the best results after 7 attempts. But now that I know how to do it, future scans will be a lot easier. Number 10. Uploading the model. When you're ready, hit the stop button. Now you can name the scan and upload it. After it's uploaded, it will take a while to process. It can take anywhere from a couple of minutes to a couple of hours depending on the size of your model. When it's done processing, you can view and edit your 3D model. As you can see, Display Land uses the same method as I mentioned before about photogrammetry, but instead of taking lots of pictures, it takes one continuous video and uses that data to turn it into a 3D model. At the bottom, you have several options for editing. I will first crop the model. Here I can move around. If I tap on the box, I can then scale it using two fingers. I can also drag the box to position it. If I want to be more precise, I can select one face and then move it individually. Using two fingers will let you move the opposite face as well. 
There are also other options, such as adding objects to your model. Or you can also add notes. You can also edit a video trailer of your model too. Once you're done, click the check button. Here you have more options such as hiding the location, changing visibility, and adding a caption. Then you can publish your model. After it's published, you can copy the link or download the model. I can share the download link by emailing it to myself like so, and then I can go to my email to download it. Or I can also view the model on my computer and use this button to download the 3D model directly. I will download it as an OBJ. After it's downloaded, you will get a zip file. Then you can extract it to get the OBJ and the texture map. Now you can use this to import to your favorite 3D software. I will be importing to SketchUp, so first I will use Transmuter to convert it. You can see that the model is not oriented correctly, so I can change the up axis to fix it. The model is also too small, so I will change the unit to meters. Now I can save it as a SketchUp file and then open it. If you have noticed, even though we cropped the model in our app earlier, this doesn't affect the 3D file. So we need to clean it up. I will first double click the model to get inside of the group. Now I can press Ctrl A to select all. Then I will orbit to the top view like so. Now hold down Ctrl and Shift, and click and drag to deselect our object from the rest of the selection. Then I can press Delete to remove everything else. Now I can use the eraser tool and clean it up a bit more. Then I will move it to the origin of the model. To clean up the lines, right click and select Soften Smooth Edges. Turn on Soften Coplanar and adjust the slider until the object is smooth. Now we can test render with V-Ray. As you can see, that looks pretty good. I will change the aspect ratio a bit so we can have a side-by-side -side look of the model and the render. Now let's take a look at our material. I will delete this one because it's not needed. For the material, it looks a bit too reflective, so I will reduce the reflection and glossiness. In addition, I will add a bump map. But we don't have one. So we can open our main texture in Photoshop and make it black and white. Then add a levels adjustment layer. Adjust it a bit. Then save it as our bump map. Now we can drag our bump map into the slot. To see the bumps easier, Let's turn off our diffuse map. It's a little too prominent, so I will decrease it a bit. 0.2 looks good. As you can see, the bump map helps add more details to our model. There we go, now you can adjust the lighting to see our 3D scan object in different environment. And you can add it to your projects as well. As you can see, this makes it super easy to 3D scan any object. With a couple of minutes, I was able to create a complex model that would probably take forever to model, that is, if I actually know how to model something like this. Remember that you can import this model into other programs like 3ds Max, Blender, and render in different software like Lumion, Twinmotion, etc. And the best thing about this app is that it's completely free. So if you want to get this app, then follow this link here. I'll leave it in the description box below as well. If you're new to using this app, there's a section on their website that helps you learn more about the process and how to fix common issues when scanning. Also, check out other scans from the community. You can explore using the app or follow their Instagram for cool feature posts. That's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what will be the first thing that you scan with this app. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.